Alright then everyone, hello and welcome back to another episode of, uh, I need to click on the emulator, Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded. Yes, I, mi I didn't miss it, otherwise I would have had to take the blindfold off again. Alright, so, in this episode, it's the Figaro Cave episode, and this is the part of the Figaro Cave episode where I don't go into the Figaro Cave. Item, skills, don't care about you, Sabin. Slash, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I need to shove Golem on her. The, the Golem will be very important for that fight. It's what's going to turn the Tentacles fight from possibly dangerous into pretty much a shoe in which is kind of what I'm aiming for. Uh, equip. Slash. Equip. Top slot. Enhancer. And now we do relic slash equip top slot one two three four for the running shoes for the classic strat. And now let's just walk straight up to the cave because I can save anywhere on the overworld. So even before I reloaded it, I was getting a battle on that step. It was probably guaranteed to happen pretty much. Hey, no healing necessary. That's nice. One, two, three, all the way to the left. If I mess something up, that'll be okay because I'll just redo it probably off camera. Equip, skills, item, save. So, uh, on to the part that actually matters. I'm not sure about my controller slots, that's the one thing. I'm not 100% certain whether these are the controller slots I'll be keeping. But other than that, if I didn't mess anything up, it should be good. Oops, minced it up between two different strats. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Four minutes in, I can take a loss. Well, that would have been nice in Jack Mrs. Challenge Battle after two steps. Of course, it's only if it's the uh, Crawler, Neck Hunter, Double Hunty battle, which is actually the worst battle I could be getting here. Although I think I got lucky and had a reflected fire too that was single target. So yeah, freebie. Just like Super Mario RPG. Get a freebie. Both people needed healing, either people needed a Phoenix down. So originally I was gonna shuffle tonics to the top of my inventory. One, two, and then use the tonics to heal through this cave to make sure I didn't run out of potions, but then I was like, you know, this is silly, I'm... one second. I, I'm using a... I didn't even run out of my stack of 25 tonics going through the cave. What are the odds that I'd run through my stack of 65 potions? It's just not gonna happen. Even with the tentacles battle where I'll want to use the potions instead of the tonics. Back one, into the doorway, one, two, three, four, five. Back to the right, not sure if that's a good sign. Battles at a regular interval is always generally a pretty decent sign though, so. Alright, that was a Dante hitting one person. That thing always has the chance to kill, but not with its regular attack, so I don't know why I bothered to use a phoenix down. Or at least, rather, attempt to use a phoenix down. And Quartz Pike sounds different, so... That one's actually dangerous, but... Alright, hit the wall. Counting steps back there. I never like counting steps, because it's easy to lose track, for one, especially in a dungeon. But, and it's also relatively easy to forget the number but there it's just too attractive an option left one all the other methods send me into a nook or cranny somewhere and I can't really back out of it easily without going into another nook or cranny counting out the steps and then just running into that one perfectly placed patch of wall it's really the only way to go about doing that easily so yeah here's where I minced up earlier and uh, Mixed up my two different strats for getting through here. Anyway, all the way left. 
The other strat was taking two steps down and just going all the way left. This strat is going all the way left, all the way down, all the way left. I mean, sometimes when I'm focusing on debating which of two options is easiest to remember, it ends up being kind of a moot point because I remember them both. <laughs> and then it's just pointless. Sometimes it gets even worse because then I mix up them both. One, two, three, four, five. Ugh. One short. And then I get my actual indicator of where I am. Huh, whatever. Preemptive strike, I don't care. Thank you, Gale, Gale Hairpin. One more step, all the way up. Left and up doesn't do it for me there. As I'm sure I mentioned her the first time I went through South Figaro Cave. It ends up taking me to the Thunder Rod room. Well, actually, probably didn't mention it because I actually wanted to get the Thunder Rod then. <laughs> but right now I didn't, so. So yeah, just gotta wait for Garrett to talk about his pet turtle. Now, it brings me up a couple steps, which is nice and easy. Because it lines me up perfectly with this. And then I can just uh, shimmy under this uh, random patch of water here. One down to the left. And then I'm lined up with the turtle. So, that's pretty handy. Alright, so if I get on a battle on the other side, that's just splendid. But if I don't, I'm going to be pressing the button for a while, because I can't tell when the turtle is, and the turtle moves rather slowly, if you're looking. So, I just don't want to trip this up. But I know that I made it to Garrett's cutscene alright, so... That's actually the worst part of this segment as far as navigation goes. The rest of it's relatively simple in comparison because South Figaro Cave is kind of awkward to go through. It's the last time though, so... Last time out of like three. But Figaro Basement is relatively clean cut. There's some... In some ways it's almost the opposite. In some places it's actually so straight that it's hard to hard to deal with sometimes because there's nothing to run into where I want it to be. <laughs> uh, oh, I just realized a better strat for one spot. <laughs> if it works. But actually, I'm not even sure it saves me anything, so whatever. That was way more than enough. I didn't need to put safety on that walk at all. It wasn't even <laughs> very far. There's only one of these walks that's actually fairly far, and even if and another thing is I'm getting an indicator of where I am fairly soon again when I enter Figaro. Third time down and then a whole while left. I'm surprised I don't use more movement patterns like this one where I take one step in one direction and then go all the way in another direction. It seems like something that would be handy, but in general it's just something that I haven't been using. Maybe it's just that I'm not very good at noticing spots where that pattern's going to be useful. That was like two steps. I didn't need to wait there. all the way left. Now I'm starting to get just a tad worried because I, I didn't have another battle. Up one. Okay. It's an okay sign. Because if I were running into most walls, I wouldn't be able to go up. Like, after going down and left, I wouldn't be able to just go up one and left and have it work out, so... Just out of thought. See, so yeah, after the last two, I gotta kind of alternate them out. And then I'm pretty much at Figaro. Weirdly enough, my first route actually went down and far to the left again, and then backtracked to get into Figaro for some reason, which is kind of silly because I can just do this. There we go. Okay, I probably bypassed the cutscene. Let's walk all the way down here. So yeah, this first part in Figaro isn't too bad. Just gotta go up and left to make it past this uh, corpse here. I was almost a little bit surprised that I actually made this. 
and to, ended up running behind the corpse instead of running off past the left set of jail cells, which would have been bad. Would have had to rethink things then. Would have been a little bit more complicated. This should be far enough, probably. Figaro Castle is kind of just like a random patch of safety in the middle of the dungeon, but since I'm not in Figaro Castle proper, I can't really do anything with it. Not without the use of my uh, super cheat code thing that allows me to just walk up into the Figaro <laughs> Castle past the guy, but I'm obviously not using cheat codes. That would waste the whole point of this run. Sna yeah, I gotta walk left for a while because... Two screen transitions. Screen transitions always delay things a bit. I can't remember if this takes me all the way, like, one step above this staircase or if I have to go down a bit. But I'm gonna go down a bit just in case because it won't hurt me either way. Which is probably why I didn't remember. Now I go uh, around the railing. Now I'm in the Returner's Hideout music area otherwise known as Figaro Basement, which is probably a more descriptive title of this place, especially from an in-game perspective. If somebody just called this the Returner's Hideout music area, I think everybody would just be blatantly pretty confused. So this first part is actually very uh, forgiving, because <laughs> it's just like one straight line. You just gotta go around the straight line, and it's very easy to remember. It sticks out in memory, obviously, very, very easily. After that, things get a little bit hairier. But for the most part, this place does stick out in memory, so... That's always nice to have at my advantage. At my disposal, as an advantage. I think those would work better. Battle. With the reflect ring on... All of, the fact that I've preemptively put the reflect ring on Celeste should make any chance of a crawler wiping my party none. Unless everything just decides to gang beat Celeste and then the crawler fire to Sabin. That's probably about the extent of what could go wrong. Provided my characters don't suddenly just suck at escaping. That's probably just about impossible. One, two, three. One, two. Alright. Gotta remember there's one space between the steps I mean the chest and the arch. And then I can go up and right. There's two chests down to the bottom left, as you might notice, and uh, they're an ether and an X potion. Similarly, the chests in the cave of South Figaro were also an ether and an X potion. But the thing is, why bother grabbing an ether and an X potion when I could just buy a potion and a tincture for not very much money at the local shop? Kinda pointless if you think about it. <laughs> for an LLG. I mean, for Gao, maybe Umaro, at really low HP, who happen to need more HP, the difference, which, the distinction between a potion and an X potion might make a difference. It's theoretically possible. If somebody decided to make an enemy that did exactly 300 damage for no reason at all, then that could very well come up, but... Oops. I was dumb. I wasn't supposed to hold the button that long. Let's just walk out of the room. Yep, thank goodness for that door there. Really just saved my bacon. One, two, three. Gotta remember the dimensions of this room, because I'm gonna be going through it again. Three steps up to the foot of the staircase, one step up to get access to the staircase. And now I can go right to go up here. Thankfully, there's doors and chests and not very much walking between them, so... I mean, if I'm getting indicators everywhere of where I am, it always helps out a lot. And it's nice that the second half is easier than the first, because... Having the hard part at the end is always worse than having the hard part at the beginning, and the tentacles are not the hard part, so... Uh, I can go around this railing now. Surprised I'm not getting battles, but I'm not worried at all because I got that chest correctly. One down to go around the railing, left down the staircase. Uh, 
what? That's not what I was supposed to be doing. <laughs> I almost just tried to menu trick. That would not be helpful in a battle scenario. I mean, not unless you're referring to a slightly different variety of menu trick, but... I'll admit, it was pretty much pointless to try and revive them. Two smacks was almost in undoubtedly not going to kill anyone. But, gotta be careful. One to the foot of the staircase, one, two, three, and then one more to get in the door. And now, suit of armor. I think this, I'm not, I don't remember the dimensions of this room exactly. I was going to do a different route, but I figured this one out in my head two seconds ago, and it seems to be better, so. Instead of walking right and up to reach the, that back corner there, and then taking left and up to get to the door. Well, I healed both of them. Either of them are dead, that's for sure. I can instead just do a series of left and ups. I mean, right and ups. There we go. Important thing, don't forget to equip seven, because if I do that, I'm probably going to die. Also, do not equip seven incorrectly. Skills, equip. I think I'm on Celeste, but it's not too big a deal if I uh, mess it up. Seven, equip, top slot. Yep, that tells me that I'm on seven correctly. Now I go down to the menu I actually want to bother with. Relic, seven, equip, top slot, one, two, three. And that should be good. Hopefully, because if I mess that up, this uh, fight is probably going to tank very quickly. Because with Sabin not able to withstand 90% of their attacks, this is not going to go well. This isn't going to be like my low-level, no-equipment game. Alright, preemptive strike makes things much easier than it would otherwise be, because it lines up my characters to so that I know exactly what order they're in, Let's them all go first. Uh, one of them countered with C's. Or an attack, maybe, I don't know. Uh, potion, Phoenix Down, Tincture. Tincture Celeste. Now, if Edgar can get an attack in, he might be able to chainsaw the bottom left crane to death. If not, that's what my Tincture's for. Uh, well, he got seized. Oh, whatever. Go figure. Celeste. Uh, what did I... Uh-oh. Okay, this is probably Celeste. Okay, what I made a mistake with was, uh... I thought I was, a uh, Edgar, and he would have lost his turn when he got seized. Oops. And Edgar would have lost his turn when he got seized, so I was expecting to have to wait for another person's turn to come up, so I just sat there in some menu or another. Yep, this is Runic, as expected. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, doom. Well, that took longer than expected, but... Nice first shot, doom. Let's move you up to blitz for later and defend. Yeah, so now we play the waiting game. Gotta... Gotta tank out those hits for a while. And if I start to hear attack noises on my side that connect... That's bad, because it means that Golem's dead. And I do not want that to happen until they're close to dead. The, my menu kerfuffle may have hurt me in that regard, because I don't get my uh, defend up quite as quickly. But, on the other hand, my one-shot doom might have uh, pulled that back relatively easily, so... 
It all depends on how many of these uh, ponging noises are shields or seas being hit by Golem rather than attacks being blocked by Golem and taking down his HP. All I can do is wait until I hear the enemies die. And then I can go back on the offensive again. And, of course, revive Edgar. Entwine does nothing. Poison spells will hurt them for very minor damage. I just gotta hope, cross my fingers, that uh, a psh noise comes before a sh noise. Not much to say other than that. Should be when they start to take around like a thousand ish damage from poison. I don't want to start attacking because if I do start attacking, well, A, I'm not going to be on the ball for my healing if I need it, but B, they'll all eat more counterattacks that way and I won't be able to defend, so that's one of them down. The other one should be very close to follow. He always is, after the first one's dead. There we go. So, on the offensive, have you attack? Oh yeah, you are on magic. Potion, Phoenix down. Edgar, you actually get to play today. Celeste will come back first up with her turn. As long as Golem holds out to the end of the battle, this will be a shoe-in, really, at this point. I don't know how much damage he's taken, or how much HP he has left, but often when he's made it this far, he's made it to the end. That's all I can say. In fact, I'm not sure where I was going with that. This is his drill. No, that's his chainsaw. Well, hopefully it was the rotating chainsaw and not the uh, sideways in and out chainsaw. I messed up because that's usually my order of events to go down there. And I ended up fiddling with the formula. Uh, whoops. I'm dumb. Alright. Gotta focus a little bit more than I was doing back there. Thankfully, both Celeste and Edgar should be just holding A, provided Edgar doesn't... Ah, oh, come on, I'm just <laughs> all over the place. I don't really care too much, because... Unless that golem falls out, he can't do anything to me. Except kill Edgar. And... Let's be honest, being able to kill Edgar isn't exactly a feat right now, so... Especially since he's just sitting there at 15 HP. Why bother healing him? It just improves the, the healing the tentacle gets from C's if he uses it on him. That's not helping me. Well, I guess he'd, it would prevent attacks from killing Edgar, but I'm relying on Golem to do that right now. I don't know how much he's got left, and I suspect he's almost tapped out at this rate, but I also imagine so is the tentacle. Celeste doesn't do that much damage, but let's be honest, my other characters aren't exactly breaking the damage cap either, so... Did he just kill himself with poison? <laughs> well, if that's what happened, it's pretty funny. <laughs> Alright, extra cutscene. And then the Figaro music starts back up. Which means I probably don't need to be menu tricking during this part. Oh, and the thieves open the door as well. Oh yeah, that was that's an important thing to remember that the thieves open the door, because otherwise I might start searching for a door noise and wondering why I didn't go inside properly. Then things just get awkward. Alright. Uh, that's not my item menu. Equip skills item. 
no one's dead because no one got hurt, but Edgar needs healing. That went really smoothly. I did have one test run where Golem ran out. It... What the... the oh, the door opened because I went into the menu and closed it with that thing. One. Around the chest. Grab the Soul Saber. Probably will never use it. But... I do know it has some magic evade, so it's possible I will. Around the chest. I don't know if there's battles in this room, I can't remember. At any rate, I can just walk straight out of here. Pretty long walk, so wasn't surprised to get a battle right near the end of that. And now I've got one even less character. Oh wow, side attack. I mean one more character, not one less. He's also more dead weight, <laughs> really, because he's my worst defended right now. I now that I think about it, I really don't want a side attack. I've got smoke bombs somewhere, though. I remember seeing them in my inventory earlier, so... And I reached the door. Oh, there's probably only one more battle till I get out, so... Messing with my setup is probably more likely just to... kill me. Reach the top there. Ascend a staircase using the down button. Definitely the best tactic ever. Alright, so I made it to there without a fight. But, in my experience, I rarely seem to ascend this staircase without getting one, so... I'm not sure what it is about this staircase. One, two, three, I'm at the foot of the staircase, just like the other staircase earlier, and now I go up and right. Oh, well, maybe I proved myself wrong. If I didn't, that would have been very bad, because it would have meant that I messed up earlier. So, somehow, I, I don't see how I would have messed up such simple steps between the between the door noise I heard earlier and the uh, top of that staircase there. Alright, so I want to do this now, of course. <laughs> Go to Collingen first, otherwise I have to re-enter Figaro next segment. And that would be great. See so, ya. Yeah. My, my only fear here is that I will accidentally talk to him again without uh, opening my menu first by mistake or something. The slower I go, the more theoretically I should be likely to prevent that, but... One, two, three. That movement is one of those things I remember from earlier for some reason. Like, I didn't even have to re-memorize it for this segment or anything, it was just kind of already in my head. So, made it. <laughs> Had one small hiccup, but uh, no big deal. So, I'll see you next segment. It only took about 26 minutes, so it's actually not too bad. It, the dungeon feels longer than it is in some ways.